My name is Mike Froman. I'm the U.S. Trade Representative, and I'm pleased to be joined here today by U.S. and African business people who know the benefits and the opportunities of greater trade between the United States and Africa. And we're very fortunate to have with us Dr. Richard Cisabera, the Secretary General of the East African Community, and Earl Gass, the Assistant Administrator for Africa at USAID. I'd like to welcome and introduce the representatives of the U.S. and African private sectors, including David Short from FedEx, which is a company that clearly understands the importance of being able to move products around the world quickly without facing unnecessary delays while clearing through customs. Uh, Temitope Iluyeme, who's here from Procter & Gamble. Globally, Procter & Gamble is the world's leading consumer packaged goods company, and P&G has the largest lineup of the world's most recognized household names, including 25 brands which generate over $1 billion each in annual sales. Thomas Patur, director of Capric, which is an apparel company with U.S. investment in Kenya. Kenya, as many of you know, is the second largest African supplier of apparel to the U.S. market under AGOA. Now, when he was in Tanzania, President Obama announced a new initiative called Trade Africa, a partnership between the United States and Sub-Saharan Africa, which seeks to increase regional trade within Africa and expand trade and economic ties between Africa, the United States, and global markets. Trade Africa will initially focus on the East African community, Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, and Uganda. The EAC is an economic success story and represents a market with significant opportunity for U.S. exports and investment. The five states of the EAC, with a population of more than 130 million people, have increasingly stable and pro-business regulations, creating a positive environment for trade and investment. Over the past five years, intra-EAC trade has doubled and the region's GDP has risen to more than $80 billion, quadrupling in only 10 years. In its initial phase, Trade Africa seeks to double intra-regional trade in the EAC, increase EAC exports to the United States by 40%, reduce by 15% the average time needed to import or export a container from the ports of Mombasa or Dar es Salaam to landlocked Burundi or Rwanda, and decrease by 30% the average time a truck takes to transit selected borders. And I'm pleased to see behind me some photos of trucks at borders and containers at ports, because we all know when it really comes down to it, it's what's going on in those places that really matter to promoting trade and investment. Trade Africa will help mobilize resources and support to increase US EAC trade and investment, support regional integration, and increase competitiveness, building upon the trade and investment partnership that we announced in June 2013. In addition to working closely with the EAC governments and with the, the Secretariat, we are partnering with other donors to support EAC regional integration, including through a new partnership with Trademark East Africa to reduce barriers at borders, including by moving to single border crossings and implementing customs modernization programs using innovative technologies that allow custom services to communicate better with each other. We're working to transform our East Africa trade hub in Kenya into a U.S. trade and investment center to provide information, advisory services, and risk mitigation measures to encourage linkages between U.S. and East African investors and exporters to help East African companies take better advantage of AGOA. And Earl Gass will talk about that in a few minutes. Just before coming to this panel, we held a U.S. EAC trade ministerial with the trade ministers or their representatives from the five EAC countries, the EAC Secretary General and the head of the Council of Ministers. And we had senior representatives there from various U.S. government agencies, including USAID, Commerce, Agriculture, State, Transportation, and USTR. There was much to discuss. We're working to conclude a trade facilitation agreement, which will reform customs policies and procedures, but also we will also work in parallel on a series of issues regarding SPS and TBT measures. We discussed the value of moving ahead to talk about an investment agreement that would contribute to a more attractive investment environment. We discussed regulatory issues that affect the competitiveness of EAC products. And with the strong engagement of the private sector, 
we had the first meeting of the US EAC commercial dialogue and had a readout of their discussions at our ministerial. So we're making good concrete progress in this relationship between the United States and the EAC, and that's a key part, the first step of the overall Trade Africa initiative. I'm very grateful to our partners in the EAC for working with us in this regard, and let me turn it over to the Secretary General for thoughts.